السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا حادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dear brother and sister in Islam I'm your brother in Islam Hussein Yi Al-Qadim from Malaysia InsyaAllah We are trying to share with you the important a Topic about how to love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam We believe that every Muslim love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alaihi wa sallam No Muslim will hate Prophet Muhammad even people who are not yet Muslim, who know about Prophet Muhammad, they will love him. But what I'm trying to share with you today is, a lot of people love Prophet Muhammad, not in the way that the Prophet want you to show your love towards him. Not in the way that Allah want us to love his messenger. But maybe in our own way, in our own traditional way, now, if our way do not contradict with the teaching of Islam and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad, no problem. You can carry on. But if what we are trying to show is against the Sunnah of the Prophet, then we should try our best to leave it, to abandon it. Not to uphold something, even if it's a tradition. We know, but we are not supposed to uphold something that is not right, that is not following the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. Now you remember the person who loved Prophet Muhammad dearly when he was born is his uncle Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab is one of the uncle of Prophet Muhammad. He loved him so much to the extent that when he was born, he freed his lady slave called Thuwaiba. And also he prepared a big feast for the people of Makkah as a sign of happiness because he got a nephew, Muhammad bin Abdullah. He celebrated his birthday. But later on, the one who go against the teaching of Prophet Muhammad is also Abu Lahab. The one who celebrate his birthday is he. The one who go against him teaching also is Abu Lahab. Now what we learn from this, now if you say you love the Prophet, the Prophet do not say that you should celebrate his birthday, but you should love him in the way he want you to love him. I give you a certain example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi Min walidihi wa walidihi wa nasi ajma'in. Now the Prophet is telling us, now you look at what the Prophet said, not what I say. None of us can be a true believer until we love Prophet Muhammad wasallam more than our own children, our own parents, and all mankind. Do we love Prophet Muhammad in that manner? No. And again, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Omar ibn Khattab one day, when Omar came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than everyone else except myself. And that's why the Prophet said that hadith. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba illaya min walidihi wa walidihi wa nasi ajma'in. You cannot be a true believer until you love me more than anyone else, even to yourself. Then Omar said, I will love you more than even myself. Then the Prophet said, you have a sound Iman. Why must we love the Prophet so much? It's because Allah loves him. And Allah put a condition, if you say you love the Prophet Muhammad, you must follow his teaching. Not do what you want, do what he wants you to do. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah has said it very clear. Meaning, O Muhammad, 
say to the people who said he loved Allah. Now Allah is telling us, whoever said he loved Allah, whoever said he loved him, our creator Allah, he must love and follow you. He must follow your teaching. Fattabi'uni. Allah said, you must, then only I will love you back. You can say you love him, but where is the sign? How can you prove that you love the Prophet? That's why the Prophet said again, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى حواه تبع لما جئت به. If you say you love the Prophet, then the Prophet said you cannot be a true believer until you have control upon your desire and you command your desire to follow the teaching that I brought to you. You know how loving the Prophet is towards his ummah. Every day he pray for us. To the extent one day while, while he was with his companion, he said aloud, Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, when can I see my family? Mata al khuani The companions was a bit uh, shocked and surprised. And they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alasna ikhwanuka ya Rasulullah, are we not part of the family? Your family, O oh Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet said, Antum ashabi, you are my companion because you live in my time. You believe in me by seeing me, following me, obeying me. But there will come a time, Sayyati Zaman Unas Yukminubi Walam Yarawani. There will come a time, there are a group of Ummah who believe in me, the Prophet said, without seeing me. Who are they? They are we. We are the one because we believe in the Prophet Muhammad, in his teaching, without being present in his time. And because of that, the Prophet said, Hum Khwani, they are my family. You see how loving our Prophet is? He always represents us. He remembers us. Even before he wants to pass away, he still pray for his Ummah. He do not just pray for himself or his immediate family or only to the companion, but he also pray for all his Ummah, including us. Fellow brothers and sisters, if you really say that we love the Prophet, we must prove our love to him by just obeying what he wants you to do. It's as simple as ABC. But if you try to show your love to the Prophet in your own way by doing a lot of things that the Prophet also do not recommend us. Neither any of the companions who love the Prophet so dearly more than any one of us who are prepared to die for the Prophet. Like Abu Bakr. You know how his love to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. SubhanAllah. MashaAllah. Each time when he traveled with the Prophet, if he feel there's a danger coming in front, he quickly will move in front to make sure if anything happens, he will face it first to protect the Prophet. If he feel that there's some danger coming from the back, immediately he will move backward to make sure no harm come to the Prophet. The same go to the right and left. Do you see how they love the Prophet? They don't even want anything to happen to the Prophet. Any harm to reach the Prophet. And none of the companions who love the Prophet will do something that the Prophet do not want them to do. Anything to do with Islam, they will only do it when the Prophet command them to do. That means if the Prophet don't say anything, especially about the ibadah, they will never create their own ibadah. And none of them involved in any form of bid'ah in the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Everything to do with Islam, they will refer to him. They will refer to him and get the final verdict. Because they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have reminded us with few of the verses in the Quran. One of the verses is Allah said, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَدُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْقِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَا يَأْسِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ دَلَّا دَلَالَ مُبِينًا it is not permissible, it is not allowed, it is not right for anyone who claims that he is a believer or she is a believer, he or she, male or female, 
when Allah and the Prophet have decided something for them to do in the form of ibadah, act of worship, they say, it's okay, I will look for another option. That means they have another option. Whoever do that, Allah said, indeed, they have disobey Allah and the Prophet. And whoever disobey Allah and the Prophet, they have turned astray. Now, fellow brother and sister, have we been trying to do what the Prophet liked us to do to please him? Or we have been doing a lot of bid'ah, and we said that we love our Prophet. I feel very sad each time when I see people who like to go and visit the graveyard of Prophet Muhammad in Medina. Because they say they love him so much. But what did the Prophet say about visiting his grave? You come to see him, give salam, and move. Give salam to Abu Bakr and Omar, and then go out. You want to pray? You pray to Allah. Don't pray to Muhammad. He don't allow that to happen. Even the graveyard of Prophet Muhammad. You cannot go and pray to Allah facing the graveyard of the Prophet Muhammad. How about the graveyard of just any Muslim? I know some Muslims are very fond to go to the graveyard and ask help, as yeah, soul. But this is not the way to show your love to Prophet Muhammad. Whoever loves him, just follow his teaching. That's how simple it is. Follow his teaching. That's what he wants you to do. The Prophet was sent by Allah to show us all the good example, like prayer. If Allah said, Aqimu Salah, establish your prayer. How do you perform your prayer? Allah never described for you in the Quran. How many rakat, when you start your prayer? Allah never explained, but He sent His messenger, Prophet Muhammad to teach us how to pray. And after the Prophet have learned from Angel Gabriel, now even the Prophet, he didn't form or create his own way of praying. He got to wait for Angel Gabriel to come and teach him. Now, we were talking about how the Prophet, when he received the command of Salah in Isra and Mi'raj. But the Prophet was not taught by Allah when he was in Sidratul Muntaha how to perform the prayer, only the gift of Salah. But how to perform the Salah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Angel Gabriel to teach the Prophet. And after the Prophet learned from Angel Gabriel, then the Prophet taught his Ummah. And then he explained everything from A to Z. Every movement in your prayer in the Salat al Kamsa is being explained by our Prophet Muhammad in the book of Hadith, like Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, or the other Qutub Sitta is known to the scholars of hadith. Now, the strange thing, until today, people who say they love the Prophet do not even know how do the Prophet perform his prayer. They don't even bother to ask how do the Prophet perform his prayer. When the Prophets make it very clear, Sallu kama ra'aytu muni usalli. You should perform your prayer the way how you seen me perform. We don't live in the time of the Prophet. Now, that's nobody said that he lived in the time of the Prophet in our time. But at least all the evidence has been recorded in the book of Hadith that the Prophet has shown us how he performed his prayer from before he started his prayer, how he took his ablution, his wudu, ghusul, or tayammum, and then how he performed his prayer. If he performed it while standing or if he's not well, how he performed while he was sitting, or how he lay down and performed his prayer. Even to the extent that every movement in the prayer, he explained to us how is qiyam, how to raise up your hand, where to put your hand, the right on the left, on the sadri. Everything is being explained by the Prophet. How you want to make a roko, where do you put your hand, yeah, when you're making a roko. Everything, the sujood and the salam, but a lot of Muslims still is very ignorant about the Prophet's way of praying. But we say we love him. If you love him, do what he wants you to do. And prayer is something that he commands you. That means he don't give you a choice. As long as you pray, no, he says, Sallu. Sallu means you must perform the prayer the way you've seen him. 
Why he spend his time to explain everything in detail? For what? It's to make things easy for all of us. Still, we are so stubborn. We ignore his sunnah. We don't think it's important. We think we can do anything we like. Please, brother and sister, have pity to yourself. We are worried if we do things that we like to do. At the end of the day, we will be in the hadith from Aisha radiallahu anha saying that the Prophet said, Man amina aman laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa raddun. Whoever act and act, a deed that was not commanded by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa neither he teaches us to do it, neither he called one us to do it, then all the deeds, even you think is good, will be rejected. So please don't do things yeah, according to our liking, but do it in the way the Prophet wants us to do. That will be the best way to show our love towards Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But if you just love him by celebrating his birthday, but you ignore his teaching, billah. Then we are not far from Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab celebrate his birthday, but go against his teaching. What's the difference between he and us? In that aspect. But if you love him, follow his teaching. Like how the companions show their love towards Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Every single word that the Prophet uttered, every action of the Prophet has been observed by all of them, and they try their level best to follow the way of the Prophet wasallam. Especially ibadah. Because ibadah, nobody can do anything without yeah, the example of Prophet Muhammad. If you do it, it's a waste of time. And know that we like to get involved in a lot of ibadah. But there is no good if you try to do it not following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. That's why the, the Prophet also reminds us by saying that Maya ismin kumba'di fasayara ikhtilafan kathira. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْقُلَافَاءِ الرَّشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِ مِنْ بَعْدِ فَتَمَسَّقُوا بِهَا وَغَدُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِسِ The Prophet said, Any one of you who survive after me, they are sure to experience the split among the Ummah into so many, many groups. When this fitna appear, then you must hold fast to my sunnah. The Prophet said, My sunnah and follow the Qulafai al-Rashidin. Not just follow the ulama. First, you must follow al-Qulafai al-Rashidin. Because these people is being guaranteed by the Prophet that they are people of Jannah, the people of paradise. So if you think you want to go to paradise, then you should follow them. Because the Prophet have guaranteed them as the people of Jannah. So they go to Jannah because of their deeds. If you follow the same kind of deeds, you will go to Jannah. There shouldn't be any problem. And then the Prophet said, فَتَمَسَّقُوا بِهَا You must hold firmly to my way and the way of my Qulafa al-Rashidin. Not just any way, but his way. We like to do a lot of things in our way. So it's time for us to yeah, humble ourselves. It's time for us to come and say to Allah and the Prophet Wasallam. Remember what the Prophet said. One day the Prophet was addressing his Ummah. And he said to them, All my Ummah, this is the wish, the prayer of the Prophet, will enter paradise. He left us. He want all of us to go to paradise, except those who refuse. The companion was shocked. Who refused Jannah? You have such kind of people who do not want to go to Jannah, to paradise. So they asked the Prophet, who is the one who refused to go to paradise? We believe none of us do not want to go to paradise. But you see what the prophets say. The prophets say, Whoever obey my teaching, Man 
Dakhala Jannah. Whoever obey my teaching, follow my sunnah, he will go to paradise. Wamana Sani Fakadaba. This hadith is very authentic from Bukhari. But whoever refuses is a person who go against me. The person who disobey the way of the Prophet. The Prophet say, this he do that. If you keep on doing things against the saying and the instruction of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, there is not a sign that you love the Prophet. There is a sign that you disrespect Prophet Muhammad, you disobey his command, and you are not going to paradise. If you say, how can you say I'm not going to paradise? I didn't say that. The Prophet said, except those who refuse. Who? It's those who disobey his teaching. What do you mean by disobey? Disobey means if the Prophet have said this, don't say something else. If the Prophet said, obey me, don't obey anyone above Prophet Muhammad, because Allah did say again, Ya ayuhallazina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadahillahi wa rasul. O you who believe, never put the saying of anybody ahead of the saying of Allah and the saying of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La tuqaddimu. One day, in the time of Abu Bakr and the Omar and all other companions were still alive after the death of Prophet Muhammad, if the Abbas came to a group of people who want to perform Hajj, and he said to them, "You perform Hajjul Tamatta, perform Hajj Tamatta, because the Prophet command us to do so. Even he don't have the chance because he brought with him some sheep. Yeah, then he said to himself, whoever do not bring any sheep with them, change the intention from." Hajj al-Qiran to Hajj Tamatta. And he said that if I will be given a chance to perform Hajj in the coming year, inshallah, I will perform Hajj Tamatta until the day of Qiyamah. Hajj that the Prophet highly recommended, Hajj Tamatta. Not Qiran, not Ifrat. Then when Ibn Abbas said this to the group who want to perform Hajj, some people respond and said, we will see what Abu Bakr and Omar do. They are referring to Abu Bakr and Omar. Who are they? This is the most beloved people by Prophet Muhammad Even that Ibn Abbas made a comment. You shaka an tanzila alaykum hijaratum min as-sama. Aqulu qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa taquluna qala Abu Bakr wa Omar. He said, the punishment of Allah. Yeah. It's going to be fall on all of you. Like the stone that fall down from the sky. Because I say, do what the Prophet want you to do. And you are telling me, you will see what Abu Bakr and Omar say first. This saying of Ibn Abbas is to tell us, you are not supposed yeah, to put the saying of even the companions of the Prophet ahead of the saying of the Prophet. If the saying of the Prophet is clear, it, meaning, if that particular issue or particular ibadah is being instructed by the Prophet to do so and so, you cannot entertain the saying and opinion of anyone else. But if the Prophet gives you a choice, then of course, you can exercise yeah, any one of it. But if the Prophet has commanded you to do something, that means you are not given a choice to choose. Now this is very important. A lot of Muslims are not aware the important yeah, to follow the teaching of the Prophet so that you really love him. But a lot of people say, I love the Prophet. So they have celebration after celebration to prove that they love. But in the same time, they go again the teaching of the Prophet To all the sisters, I would like to remind you, if you say you love the Prophet, please encourage your husband to love Prophet Muhammad if your husband want to keep beard, don't call them to shave their beard. That means you dislike the sunnah of the Prophet. You must be happy if your husband, who is trying their best to follow the way of the Prophet. But the intention must be important. They keep their beard because they want to follow the sunnah. 
not just a trend, yeah, not a fashion. The intention must be important. I just give you one of the examples. There are many other examples because the Prophet is the best example for all of us. So if MD want to follow the Sunnah, you should encourage them, welcome them, be pleased with them. Tell them, I love you, my husband, because you love the Prophet Wasallam. That's how you should respond to show your love towards Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. May Allah open our heart and make us the people who really love the Prophet, not by word, but by action, by following and obeying the command of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and do what he want us to do, not do what we want to do. Wa billahi tawfiqi wal akhra da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.